sights to show you. Okay. Show me. back with another d d movie time and today Cora I got a pop quiz question for you who is Frankenstein describe Frank Frankenstein he's basically a monster that's being made by body parts so sewed up and being back from the dead but basically lost our memories because it's made from other but but people's body parts. What so if I that? told you you everything you just said is wrong? What? Frankenstein is actually the doctor, the one that created the monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then who made Frankenstein? His parents. <laughs> Their parents? <laughs> Who made their parents? Their parents? Who made their parents? It, it just keeps going, Cora. Oh my god. But Frankenstein is actually the human doctor who builds the monster. For some reason, though, at some point, people got it confused and the monster ended up being called Frankenstein, even though that's not true. So... If you haven't guessed, today we will be watching Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And this is a movie that I'm going to point something out to Cora while we're watching it. And it is going to blow her mind when she sees this person. Like was the entire nuke or was it just a little bomb? Or was I, I don't know. I mean, it depends how well you remember Harry Potter. So nuke or... So nuke it is. But, all right, we're going to go ahead and jump into Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, starring, um, oh man, I can't remember who, oh, Robert De Niro. I think it has Hella Bowen Carter and a couple other people. Um, I mean, a lot of other people technically, but <laughs> you get the idea. Um, so we will see you all after we're done with the movie. Bye! No one need ever die. I will stop this. No, you can't achieve death. We won't know. Unless we try. What you are suggesting is not only illegal, it is immoral. Yes. That's the combination.
Alright, so we just finished Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So what was this movie about, Cora? Is the movie was basically about this dude who is kind of a scientist. Scientist slash doctor. Science doctor scientist whatever. And he basically lost I guess the mail or Someone that takes care of the town that he likes, and he loses the other dead body because the mayor is dead or wherever he is, and he tries to make a Frankenstein. He thinks it goes wrong. He makes a monster. Make a monster slash Frankenstein monster. Same thing, kind of. The monster never had a name. I haven't just. We could just. You said you were going to give him a name, but how about we just call him Robert? Yeah, Robert. Since uh, he was played by Robert De Niro. Okay. Robert. Robert got out and got free because the whole town changed him. Dad, but they thought he was got virus. Well, who's this story? What's the name of the person we're following? S someone was the he said this guy's a doctor, but who is this guy? <laughs> someone was the last name Frankenstein. Victor. Victor Frankenstein. Alright. And, uh, so what happens with the monster once it gets away? It goes ahead, finds some shelter. A couple minutes, a couple minutes later, he gets kind of kicked out. He goes back to bring back one of the gifts that they gave him, thinking it was some type of spirit. Well, that wasn't minutes. In their world, it was months. He was with them for like a month or so, and he helped them pull their crops so they could have food. And pay their bills, and then they everybody that he basically was coming across just immediately jumped to conclusions, which is one of the morals of the story. Don't just jump to conclusions because you don't understand something, which is a big problem people don't seem to get even these days. They don't understand something, and so they want to immediately jump to a conclusion instead of having rational conversations. And figuring it out. Yeah, because what if somebody was framed? You don't know because you just jump straight to conclusions. And if the punishment is death, you can't ask them because they're dead. Right, what was the second moral of this story? You see, my guess is never waste your time on a stupid creation. No. It's think about the consequences of your actions. Um, okay, so the monster get loses another place to live. Um, yeah, because he literally burns it down. Yeah, I don't know why he just didn't like stay there. I mean, he had a free house. No one was going to take it from him. No one could take it from him. So anyways, uh, he decides he's going to go back to speak with Victor. Why does he want to talk to Victor so badly? To basically get himself a Frankenstein wife. I'll pick a, I'm so loose to the word Frankenstein! Ah! And does Victor want to help him? No. <laughs> so he basically does not do what he says until the wife? His wife. His Victor. wife. Victor. 
Elizabeth's wife. Elizabeth. Elizabeth died. But how did she die? Hot pulled out. By Robert. By Robert. And she basically gets thrown into the Einstein world. She basically gets thrown into the Einstein world. Yeah, but and she can't handle it. So what does she do? She basically sets herself on fire and puts the entire house down. Yep. I don't know what those walls are made of. They must have been painted with gasoline. Because that house went up awfully fast. Yes, sir. But some idiot came in and put gasoline in the paint. <laughs> Maybe. Because <laughs> that house went, like, every room she went to just suddenly combusted into flames. Just suddenly erupted flames. So... Yeah, what does Victor do after she does that? Uh, he vows revenge on the monster, Robert, and he plans to chase it to the ends of the earth to kill it. Mm -hmm. And does he succeed? No. He died. Yeah. But Robert is still alive. Yeah, and, it's, and he's sad, right? Mm-hmm. Why is he sad? His career's gone, and he gets nobody to make himself a wife. Well, who, what did he call his creator? Friend. Father. Father. He says that Victor's his father. Father. Which is kind of true, because he did create the monster. He created that entity and brought it to life. And if it wasn't for him, he wouldn't exist. Yep. So Mr. Wobble wouldn't exist if Victor didn't exist. Yep. That was Victor wasn't a doctor slash scientist. And did you recognize, and who did you recognize in this movie? Victor was a dude from Harry Potter. Yep. Look just like him too, right? Gilderoy Lockhart? Yeah. He didn't act like him, but he definitely sounded and looked a lot like he does. Just, just in case if you watch the Harry Potter movies and, and uh, if you forgot, if my dad feels like extra edit him, picture yeah. here of what he looks like and picture here what he looked like in the movie. Yeah. Um, and you know, and you knew Elizabeth too. She was also in Harry Potter. Who did she play in Harry Potter? Uh, just, uh, I forgot her name, Pickle. Bellatrix. But, yeah, Bellatrix. And we also had Cornelius Fudge in this movie, too. He was one of the teachers at the beginning. Yeah. So, uh, teaching the, the class. Alright. Well, that's going to end this part of the review. Uh, when we come back, we will give our final scores. Bye. Looking for something to pass the time? Need something good to read or listen to? To get you ready for Halloween. Do you like famous slashers like Jason, Freddy, Michael, or Ghostface? Do you wish there was something new and original that you could read on your phone or tablet? Or perhaps you like to grab a scary book and read by candlelight? Check out these short stories written by Sean Connaughton. When a mildly abusive man mistreats his bride-to-be on Halloween night, his neighbors decide to teach him a lesson. A lesson he won't soon forget when he finds himself in the witch's hole. And narrated by me, Tara Klein. A Seattle detective, Scott Grimes, investigates a string of odd murders. But where this case ultimately leads him he could never have predicted when he crosses paths with the legal murderer. And narrated by me, Brad Letson. Join the Dunn family as they make their way to a vacation home for a weekend trip. However, when the sun goes down, things seem to get just as dark inside as outside. Stay with the Duns and see if you can make it through the mansion.
Audiobook narrated by Dylan Poor. This story follows Sir Godwin as he and a small group transport a lovely princess out of a soon to be war zone, and as they travel, they must pass through some woods. However, things grow darker and more sinister the deeper into the woods they go, and they find what some believe to only be known as the legend of Fort Blood. Narrated for you by Angela Strauman. So, turn out the lights, light a candle, grab your phone or tablet, and download your ebook or audiobook now. Currently available all year round on Audible Amazon and iTunes. So don't miss out and grab your copy today. All right, Cora, on a scale of 1 to 10, can you sit proper? On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give Mary Shelley's Frankenstein? 9 out of 10. It had some good parts still, but it had some sad parts still. Yeah? Did you have a favorite scene? Say, like when he, like when he called the Victor father. At the end. Yeah, the. Uh. I thought it would have been when he was helping that family and living with that family, kind of. That too, but he didn't really show himself. But we'll probably understand because if I realize that's all. May our body parts and stitch together. I probably won't show myself. Yeah. And I'll just sneakily help and won't show myself. I didn't tell this. Did you have a favorite character? Monster, even though he was kind of a bad guy. Like, you can fit him into the bad guy section. Yeah. A bad guy category. But you'll put them like kind of in the middle between good guy category and bad guy category because I just wanted was a friend or wife. Yeah. Mostly friend. Well, he was kind of a killer, you know. He did kill a couple people. Yes, yeah, so that's why I say you can also fit him into the bad guy category, but he was also kind of lonely. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's actually the third moral is, you know, uh, be careful how you treat people, you know. I mean, ever since he was created, he was getting nothing but, uh, hate spewed on him and violence against him. So, I mean, that's one of the first things Robert learned was violence and hate, even though he was trying to be a good person. Which and everybody kept turning away from him, you know, once they saw him. Like that family, you know, the, as soon as they saw him, the father freaked out and started beating him. Uh, even though the grandfather was like, no, stop, don't. But alright, um, moving on to my score. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would give this a 9. I like this one a little bit better than the Dracula movie. Um, this is one I could rewatch. Um, yeah, and I just think it's overall slightly better. Um, both of these movies, uh, this one and Dracula, the one we did last time, uh, were both made by the same director, or the same person, I believe, Fred. Coppola, uh, and, uh, yeah, so, all right, that's gonna wrap up this review of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, uh, we'll be back next time with another monster movie, we'll and, see you in the next one, and don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that subscribe button, how does it can, bye.